the year is 1861, and we're talking about uh, an Indian raid by the Comanche Indians made into Old Dehanis, Texas, which is uh, a little settlement that's located about 50 miles west of San Antonio. And the following facts were collected from a Mr. Chris Beto, who was an eyewitness to these accounts. What had happened is a band of Indians came near Dehanis and stole a lot of horses. But before the people knew they were in the country, an old man named John Streber went out one morning on a mule to hunt a yoke of oxen. And sometime during the day, the mule came back without his rider, and the mule had an arrow sticking in it. And great excitement, of course, prevailed in Dehanis, and they wanted to uh, find the uh, old man, as they realized he had probably been killed by the Comanche. So a large crowd assembled there in Dehanis to organize a search for the body and to fight the Indians if they should come in contact with it. And so these people at that time were real particular to comply with and adhere strictly to the formalities of law, and so they made arrangements to hold an inquest once the body was located. And so they had no justice of the peace at that time, but Mr. Schalkenhausen, their school teacher, acted in the capacity of a coroner, being an educated man, and he could hold an inquest as well as anybody they supposed. So they agreed to go with him, and soon a lot of things were ready. The wagon and a team had been procured and hitched up, and, and this teacher rode with the driver. The balance of the party went out uh, ahead on horseback to search for the body of the missing man. Now when they arrived at the place where they were supposed the old man had been killed, the mounted men separated to hunt for that body, but it was understood that whoever came across the body first should make it known by a loud call to the others or shooting a gun. A man named Deckard first came upon the body of Mr. Streber and gave the signal. The searchers soon collected together on the spot, and Mr. Crest Beto was sent to inform Mr. Sauter, who was the son-in-law of the man killed, who was in company with a teacher coming with a wagon. So Mr. Beto met the wagon and told the news of the finding of the body of Mr. Streber to Mr. Sauter, and he told him he should drive to the spot so they could uh, load the body there. Now the wagon passed the spot where the body lay, yeah, but it had to turn back because it had to get up a ravine to get there. Now this was towards Dehanis, and Mr. Beto said that he rode off, and uh, he said the driver of the wagon had only put on the bridles of the horse as they had not been unhitched while Mr. Sauter was waiting for the dead man to be found and informed where to drive to. And now a very strange and unaccountable thing happened at this time. While Mr. Sauter was adjusting bridles to the horses, the teacher, Mr. Schockhausen, got out of the wagon and followed Mr. Beto on foot while the driver carried the wagon up the ravine as instructed. Now when the wagon arrived, the men were around the body of Mr. Schreiber, ready to hold an inquest, but the teacher hadn't arrived yet. After a short time, the two men went to see what was delaying the, the teacher. They were gone about 20 minutes and then came back and reported that they could not find him at all. Now, 15 men set out on horseback and scattered in various directions to search for the teacher. And they shouted and shot for six hours, but no response ever came from the missing man. They say he had disappeared as completely from the earth as if the earth had opened up and swallowed him. Now, by this time, a cold northern had come upon him, and the men were without coats, so the search had to be abandoned. The dead man, Mr. Schreiber, was placed in the wagon and carried back to Old Dehanis, and he was buried without the inquest being held. They noticed that the body had been lanced and scalped, but it had not been shot with either a bullet or an arrow, and the wounded mule must have dodged into a thicket and eluded the Indians, or they would have taken the mule too. So Mr. Uh, Schreiber, the old man, evidently fell from his mule or was dragged off by a limb because a mule came in with a saddle and bridle on it. So this is just one of many instances of Indian depredations in South Texas in the mid-19th century.